Jack Canfield said, everything you want is on the other side of fear. So what's holding you back? What's stopping you from achieving your goals? Do you have any goals? Do you know what you want to do with your life? I asked myself these very questions when I felt like my life, just, it just wasn't where I wanted or needed it to be. We all have those moments when we are trying to find where we fit in at, in this thing called life. Is this job really where I want to be in 20 years? Will going to college really change my life? We look at the results of other people's lives and choose if it's worth it or not. When in all actuality, we can't judge our life on the decisions of others. Only you can live your life for you. And so you must find out the specific reason you were put here. The only way you can prevail is if you let go of holding on to your past, to holding on to what you left in the past. The only way you can prevail is if you let go of what's holding you back. Excuses, bad habits, belief system, attitude, all play a factor in affecting who you will become. You have to build a positive momentum if you've been sur surrounded by negativity your entire life. Bad company corrupts good character. So even if deep down inside you're a good person with goals and expectations, the negativity can dampen the spirit of growth within you. We have to move away from those things so the Father can begin to order our steps. Psalms 37, 23 through 24 says, the steps of a man are ordered by Yahweh, and he delights in his way. Though he falls, he is not cast down, for Yahweh is supporting his hand. The Most High wants to order our steps, wants to help us, wants to guide us to victory, but we have to put forth our best efforts as well. Many give up before that happens and misses out on the blessings that they have stored up. I was part of a group that mentored youth that were at risk. Many of them actually came from well-off families, but lost. They felt lost. Felt like their parents didn't love them. Felt like there was no hope for them. A lot of them wanted to die. They cut themselves, took pills, and tried to end it. It seemed like they didn't fear death. But when they came to youth night, they were able to receive love, to receive hope, to receive the hug they so desperately needed. They were able to express themselves. They were able to receive attention. They were able to receive the extra push they needed to help them fight what was holding them back. Natalia Babbitt said, do not fear death, only the unlived life. You don't have to live forever. You just have to live. The description in Psalm that says, let me instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Let me counsel my eye be on you. For the day you were conceived, you were a fighter. Out of the approximate 1,000 sperms that entered the fallopian tube, only about 200 reached the egg. The rest get attached to the lining of the oviduct or just give out and die. Out of the approximately 200 sperms that reached the egg, only one enters the egg to fertilize it. You were that egg. You were the fighter that made it in that beat the odds, that pushed your way into life because you wanted it more than any of the others. You have to continue to fight. If you could win under that pressure, then it's nothing to succeed now. Second Chronicles says, be strong therefore and let not your hand be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Around 2003, my music partner and I signed to Deftone Records. I went to their office in New York and signed the contracts. We were supposed to go to the studios in Arizona to record, so I took a leave from school in anticipation of leaving to fulfill my dreams. The date kept getting pushed back and we began to get frustrated. In the interim, we had shows that were booked before we signed the contract. I informed them about these shows and they said we couldn't honor them because they weren't booked through them. This didn't set right with us, so we informed them we were going to do them anyway. To make a long story short, they sat us on the shelf. So we continue to do to sit the very thing that we knew to do. We continue to do what we were already doing. We didn't let that disappointment discourage us. 
We went on performing around the states in parades, in groups, in group homes, in prisons, churches, community events, etc. If you let your setback defeat you, you will never be an overcomer. One of my favorite scriptures says, See, the Master Yah comes with a strong hand, and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He feeds his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs with his arm and carries them in his bosom, gently leading those who are with young. Isaiah 41, 10-11 His reward was with us, regardless of our setback. We were not only making headlines, but we were helping to change lives, especially those that were still young and impressionable. We planted a seed that helped push many to the next level of their lives, and, and that, was, that was enough. Thanks for me. I ended up meeting a young, un unordained, at the time, Catholic minister that was on fire for the youth and the love. He had the love of the Most High God. I joined up with him, and we began to collect youth from the inner city as well as the suburbs for a life-changing meeting every Wednesday. These kids were from both sides of the tracks but had a desire to bridge gaps and to be different. We went on speaking engagement from Syracuse, New York to New Hampshire. There were times Justin and I had to change our clothes in the McDonald's bathroom after driving all night to meet with the school that was considering booking us. We did what we had to do to get the job done. And the father was behind us. We ended up performing at Soul Fest which hosts over 5,000 Christians. It was an amazing experience, one I never thought would happen. The youth that were with us raised their own money to go on a trip because they wanted to experience something different, to be a part of something greater. And they were. It wasn't easy. We had some tough times, but we fought through the difficulties and added another victory to our shoulder. Don't waste your talents because things aren't going right or they're taking longer than you expected. Keep pressing on, keep fighting. You made it this far and giving up shouldn't be an option. Don't put your talents to the back of the bus because somebody didn't agree with you or didn't support you or didn't show up. Sometimes the best revenge is to show them that you can do it, that you won't give up, that you're a fighter and whatever held them back will not hold you back as well. You will not continue the same negative habits thinking you'll receive a different result. You'll think on your own, move on your own, and separate yourself from anybody, anything that doesn't support your betterment. Now is this the time to pick your target and go for it? What do you think? Now is the time to pick your target and go for it. You may have had many things you want to accomplish and you will, but set out to accomplish that one goal and all the others will seem easier. If you are a person who has trouble multitasking, focus on one task at, at a time. It's better to accomplish one task the right way than to do 10 and get them all wrong. Change won't happen until you decide you want to do the things the right way. When you change your mindset, you can do all things. When you change your mindset, you believe in yourself and your ability to go where you need to go. Nothing can stop you, nothing can hold you down, nothing can get in your way because you are changed, you are focused, you have decided to not let anything hold you back. There's a scripture in the book of Jeremiah that says, And Hananiah spoke in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says Yah, so I shall break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, sovereign of Babel, from the neck of all nations within two years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Jeremiah 29 11. So even though the, the breakthrough you may need may take some time, if you encourage yourself daily, build up your confidence daily, you will reach that goal you need to achieve. That yoke will be broke off your neck. That trial will come to an end. The blood, sweat, and tears that you put in, the sleepless nights, the not eating, the long steady days, the researching, the criticism, it would all pay off in the end. The fact that you failed before should no longer be a factor in your life. As long as you have breath in your lungs, you are a victor. You're more than a conqueror. You're more than capable to reach the top of any mountain because you have a new and improved mindset. 
You may have been the, the kid picked on in school, the one always chosen last on the basketball court, the one asked at the last moment to the prom. All that doesn't matter if you keep your eyes on the prize. You are not what you used to be, nor are you what people say you are. When I played basketball, when I was younger, I was always the smallest one on the court. But because of that, I went harder than anyone else because I wanted to play. I wanted to fit in. So I fixed it in my mind that I had to use what I had, which was my speed. I refused to be a bench warmer on the la or the last one picked. I had speed, I had agility, and I had a point to prove. Either you get what you want or you watch others have it. Get up early every morning, go to the gym, take time to pray, listen to motivational speeches, study your craft, but do these on a consistent basis so you become the leader in your life. Everyone looks to follow. You have to go after your dreams like a lion after a gazelle. You have to want it more than the person already doing it. Get rid of the distractions. Turn off the TV shows. They aren't making you any money anyway. Put away the video games. Get off Facebook and Instagram 12 hours a day. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Whatever is distracting you, toss it and spend that extra time on investing in your future. If your family doesn't understand, it's fine. If your friends don't understand, They'll be okay. This is your life you're talking about. And every minute wasted is like subtracting from your account. You may ask, when is the best time to start? There is no time like the present. Don't say I'll start next week. Next week may never come. Don't give yourself an opportunity to procrastinate. You wasted enough time already. Get started now. And take it one step at a time. And if you're dabbling in it as we speak, it's time for you to master it. You have no time to be scared of advancement. If this is what you want, go for it with everything in you. This is a scripture that says, watch, stand fast in the belief, be men, be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. Let all that you do be done in love. In order to stay in the field you are in or the field you desire to be in, you must have a love for it. You must have a love for something so much that you have a zeal to go after it for that very purpose. Upgrade your effort like you upgrade your cell phone every time the newest version comes out. If you don't have the reason, you will not have the why. If you don't have the reason, you will not have the why. You have to be open to learning more. You have to be open to doing more research, to taking a class, reading books, watching videos, listening to CDs in the car, whatever it takes to get you where you need to be in order to get where you need to go. You need to be open to learning more. Go for what you want, not for what people say you should have. Nobody can live your life for you but you, so live it to the fullest. The Father gave it to you for a reason, so make the most of it. Discover your talents, and while you're doing it, create a few others and watch and see your gifts will make room for you. We are meant to grow. If you're not growing, you're dying. Don't be the flower in the corner of someone's house destined to die early due to no sunlight. Your energy is precious and needs to be set free to develop. Be passionate about what you do. And it's that passion that will eventually draw others to see the worth in you. One day, while working on an advertising and booking for our music, I stumbled onto a contest to be able to perform at Super Bowl 46. It immediately drew me in because it was always my dream to go higher and to perform at the Super Bowl it was a dream of mine. I immediately ran out and made clips for the video I was going to submit, then posted it to every social media site I was on. My friends and family around the world began to vote for me and thanks to the Most High, I was one of the two winners chosen to go on an all expenses paid trip to Super Bowl 46. I was there for three days, stayed in a nice hotel, chauffeured around, went to practice with the NFL Gospel Choir, which consisted of NFL players. It was one of the most amazing experiences I had in my life. I went to the taste of the NFL dinner, which consisted of chefs from around the world and amazing entertainment. 
I had VIP to all the events going on, so I felt like I was there. It, this was it. I made it. All my hard work had paid off. I walked the red carpet, hung out with stars, and felt like that was where I belonged. The Giants were playing the Patriots that year, and every radio station was calling me while at the game, asking me about the experience and who would I think would win the game. I was sitting in the Patriots goal line a few seats from Run from Run DMC. I ran into Flavor Flav at the gift shop and a few other reality TV stars as well. I knew the Giants were going to win. I was praying the Giants were going to win and they had better win <laughs> since I told everybody they would. The Giants won it and I was ecstatic along with a couple of the Corbuses that I had the pleasure to spend time with during this great time changing opportunity. I had one regret though, and that's, and that's, I didn't seize my moment when it came to me. You see, I was an inspirational rapper performing with the NFL Choir. The song we sung just happened to have a rap part in it that was being done by one of the players. I knew that part. I studied it all the way there just in case. When it was time for us to go on air, the player who did the rap wasn't there and we were waiting on him. I could have stepped up and said, hey, I know it but I felt like I would be stepping on his shoes. But in reality, it was my time to shine and I let it pass. I regret it to this day, but you either take what happened to you in your past and you use it to propel you forward or you hold on to it as an excuse not to continue. Today, every year when the Super Bowl is coming around, I think about it and I reminisce and it fuels me to do something greater. So I'm always looking for that next big opportunity I've changed the way I looked at defeat, and so defeat has just become a lesson for greatness. There are many things I've done that people probably said I would never be able to do. But since I don't view my dreams as minutes, it doesn't matter what they think about me. Never let fear hold you back. Your dream cannot grow feet unless you begin to walk. Don't stop until you achieve it. No matter how many disappointments you have, people don't support you. Seems like it's taking too long. Don't give up. What's inside you may be what the world is watching, waiting on. Cut the lines that are connected to the boats of your past. If they have been nothing but destructive, you no longer need them. If there's no way to go back, you can only move forward. It's time to stop making excuses and create results. Believe that you can do it. Speak like you can do it. Operate like you can do it and do it. Tyler Perry said, now we are focused to one idea and make it work. It's important you keep fighting. You're not alone. We are in the hands of the Almighty Father who will provide for us with strength when we need it and carry us when we're depleted. Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not become weary in well-doing for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't let being a victim stop you from being a victor. It's time to rewrite your story. And in the end, you win. You went through the worst. Now it's time to push forward to your best. You went through the worst. Now it's time to push forward to your best. You have your best life ahead of you. Time to live it. When I think about sin in my life, I get a feeling Am I losing time? Feeling my crime has hit the ceiling And he's no longer listening So I gotta break down, obey every word that he spoke Catch the pronoun, I'ma pray it lyrically Wanna blow with hands up, eyes closed, tears falling down on his black book I can see your head shaking, foot tapping, arms crossed Tempted the sun to reveal the sins of this black horse I was riding dangerously in the road of blasphemous Super schools up in the birds of the massacre Blood on your children's shirt, dying by the hospital Beat up by the police, we're trying to beat this obstacle Stabbed in the train station, shot while I ran away Tased while I'm handcuffed, I can't believe this world today Courts of this capital, clear the files, don't think get away Babylon is stretched across the globe, pray you come today
I don't wanna feel the steel of a dentist Live a life on a apprentice Seek a lifetime of vengeance Using words as a weapon Watch my children live oppressive But the bullies are aggressive Suicide and other messages From a life we didn't cherish Now we're dreaming of a better way Hebrews that really pray Standing by the family Because they all awake today Cleaning up our neighborhood No more drugs and alcohol For the years of slavery It's time for us to make the call I'll be out, we hear you now Come and get the scattered kids We're giving you our everything It's time to change the way we live Trumpets are in the air And you hear our holy cry Tired of offending you And so we want another try It's time to tell the devil by Leaving all these earthly things Send your army down to us We want to hear your angels sing This is coming to an end Israel is back on course I meet you in Jerusalem I'm riding on my black horse